Mr. Rotola, thank you for taking the time to answer a few questions on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which began almost exactly two months ago, and its effect on European politics. So um, first of all, in Finland and Sweden, there's a growing acceptance of them becoming NATO states. How likely is that this will happen and what factors play a role in this decision? Well, uh, it is, of course, a key issue that is related to, to uh, Russia waging a war of aggression against Ukraine. Uh, we have known for years that, that Russia has been opposing uh, Finnish NATO membership. Uh, it has said that it will lead into economic, political and, and military consequences. Um, and, and Finland, of course, has been a bit hesitant uh, to, to cross the threshold uh, because of, of the stability of the region. Um, but now the Russian demands or the illicit, illegitimate side of those demands have been underscored by waging the war against Ukraine. So that has destabilized already the region. And then when it comes to political and economic consequences, those have already happened. Uh, so de facto, uh, uh, we have, a, have a strong disagreements with Russia. Uh, political relations are bad. Economic relations because of the sanctions and counter sanctions, those uh, are going downwards very speedily, very fast. So what what is left is military consequences, and 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 uh, of course threatening military consequences. Or you already say that Finland need needs to get some shelter from somewhere. So so actually, Russia through its actions has have has been pushing us away uh, from. Uh, relatively good and manageable bilateral relations to, to, to thinking about uh, alliances uh, 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 beyond uh, European Union. So um, Russian actions uh, have clearly pointed out the importance of Finland trying to find a little bit more shelter. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I have to say that Finland feels very secure a strong footed when it comes to its own uh, defense. Uh, Finland is very Spartan nation, so we have all, uh, always taken care of the, the territorial defense of Finland. Uh, but uh, the case study of Ukraine and the lessons learned from Ukraine shows that you need to have a steady, for example, steady uh, military security of supply. And, and uh, so the NATO membership uh, can contribute to added sense of shelter and security and, and uh, sustainability of, of, uh, of Finnish uh, territorial defense. So, so that those are the ingredients of, of this sudden seismic shift in Finland so that people have realized that, that uh, our neighbor is not calm and rational and, 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 uh, and uh, well-behaving uh, neighbor, but, but actually uh, is much more irrational and not so strategic, more, much more unpredictable than we, we thought. So the, that's basically the Finnish point of view, how, how, how the Finns feel the situation has shifted. I see. And excuse me if this question is too speculative, but how likely do you think that them, these states actually becoming NATO states is well, I, I think in the Finnish case, uh, it is relatively likely. Uh, um, I, I, uh, no country can join NATO without signaling and wanting to join NATO. So if you uh, look to the historical cases of countries joining NATO, they have uh, uh, had campaigns for years in order to kind of get this privilege of being able to, to join NATO. Although the door is open, uh, you need to signal your willingness uh, to contribute to the collective security of Europe. Uh, and and um, I'm sure that the Finns are very close uh, to, to being able to signal that. And uh, when you look to the map of Northern Europe, you, you realize that, that when it comes to NATO's defense planning, there's a piece of the puzzle that is missing. Uh, if you go from Norway, northernmost part of Norway, uh, just across the border from a uh, Russian uh, uh, major military bases in Kola Peninsula, 
uh, you, and uh, you draw a line to, to Gulf of Finland and to NATO member state of Estonia when it comes to the kind of the preparedness of NATO, uh, Finland uh, uh, is clearly strategically uh, located. Um, and so is Sweden. Uh, uh, Sweden, I think, is not uh, uh, exactly on the same tempo than, than Finland. Uh, it is perhaps a few weeks late in its NATO debate, but. Uh, but uh, the recent polling numbers in, in Sweden clearly indicate that uh, that Swedes are uh, willing to reconsider the long-standing position of, of, of neutrality that has lasted more than 200 years uh, and has worked for them uh, uh, during, during uh, uh, two world wars. So they are willing to reconsider that, especially if Finland decides to join. So, so the likelihood of kind of a common application is uh, increasing and and, 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 and and it could be a matter of weeks rather than months that, that Finland and, and Sweden are going to apply. Uh, the worries in Finland and Sweden have to do with the gray period, you know, the application period based on the experiences of, of Ukraine and Georgia that, that you are left on a limbo uh, in between state. Uh, which can be uh, rather dangerous. So, so there's sort of anxiety in both countries associated with uh, with uh, this signaling, and then the end ending in inside NATO that something needs to happen in between. That there has to be some kind of a security guarantees from uh, not from NATO but from uh, some NATO member states, uh, kind of car carrying these countries over to the NATO membership. Uh, so uh, I hope that NATO has uh, learned the lessons from Georgia and Ukraine that that they they have uh, they are better prepared for new members. And uh, at the same time, of course, Finland is, uh, uh, as I said, it is a Spartan Mason with a very stoic uh, focus on, 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 on defense. So, so it is it is uh, able to take care of, of the territorial defense of of the 1,300 kilometers of, of the border with, with Russia. Uh, and adding to that, Russian military forces are in Ukraine. 75% of, of the Russian capabilities are there. So, so there's a period of time when, when Russia is very much focused in a mess that they have created them, for themselves. Um, and they have suffered quite a lot of losses there. So, so uh, from my perspective, uh, the gray period perhaps is not that dangerous as, as some make it to be, uh, that, that it can be managed and, and ha handled. Uh, but but, that, but this is kind of the, my current evaluation of the situation, but it is a process. So, so there's quite a lot of, you know, the Helsinki, Stockholm, they need to figure out what they are doing, uh, kind of a clarify their willingness to join NATO and then in different NATO capitals, especially the major uh, NATO capitals like Washington, uh, there's processes going on, uh, you know, how to uh, safeguard the process, uh, whether or not it is escalatory to, to take on new uh, NATO members. So it is a kind of a complicated process because there's quite a lot of moving parts in it. Uh, so that's the reason why in Finland it is referred to as a process. And, and, and it is left uh, currently in a relatively ambiguous state. So, so we are trying to figure out uh, the process and at what point we should signal uh, our motivations. I see. And you already mentioned that Russia has voiced their grave concern about these processes of Sweden and Finland joining NATO. And the Kremlin and the state media have also uttered threats, consequences, if this should happen, they have been rather vague. What do you think could actually happen? How could Russia react? Well, I, uh, as I said, you know, when it comes to the economic consequences, what can there be anymore? You know, like the, uh, there's almost a full embargo on the Finnish uh, Russian border. Uh, so the economic consequences cannot be more severe than the than the situation currently is. 
uh, then uh, political consequences, the relations are not in a good state currently. There's no trust between Russia and Finland. Um, um, then the military component, what that could then mean, uh, I would say that yes, uh, some kind of a, perhaps uh, threatening maneuvers and um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, somehow indicating the military, uh, the nuclear capabilities of Russia, uh, kind of a threatening actions. But, but, but beyond that, I don't see much that, that Russia actually can, can do. They can, of course, if, if they want to use some cyber means to, to, to mess around with, the, with uh, Finnish um, uh, sense of, of security. But that would be very counterproductive for them because that would actually speed up the NATO process and speed up the de determination of joining NATO. Uh, it's very difficult to see how Russia could start, for example, military actions. Because as I said, mili uh, militarily Finland is very strong and capable. It has the, one of the biggest artilleries in, 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 in Europe, for example. Uh, it has capabilities that, that are very well rehearsed. Uh, the wartime army of Finland is, is around 300,000 strong. Um, so uh, it would be difficult to see that, uh, that Russia has the resources beyond kind of a, uh, signaling and, and, and disrupting. Uh, um, and, and the more they do that, the more determined uh, things would be. Uh, um, it's, it is fiercely independent country, so, so kind of a foreign meddling in uh, would be, uh, the reaction would be the opposite from uh, what Russia wants. So I would expect that, that uh, Russia would actually point out uh, the relative merits of, of, of Russia as an opportunity rather than, than a call in a counterproductive uh, way. Uh, or trying to stop Finland by any means. Uh, so I, I, my expectations are not very high when it comes to Russian capabilities to produce anything that evil. And, and, and even the motivations might be lacking. Uh, but that said, of course, Finland is in a strategic play, uh, location. So, so the gates of St. Petersburg, uh, the Gulf of Finland, strategically uh, very, uh, uh, vital parts uh, yeah, on a map, and then the northern, uh, uh, the Arctic dimension of Finland is, is of course very important as well. Um, so there are different ways of thinking about it, but the history doesn't end in the Finnish uh, NATO membership. Uh, you know, things are very realistic about uh, the situation that the, at the end. Uh, it is about Finns defending Finland, but if there's added value in NATO, then, then that is of course a plus. And, uh, and I think Finland has fairly good reputation when it comes to collective defense. We participated, the Finland, uh, Finland participated in the only NATO war that has happened, and that was the Afghanistan. So Finns were there. Um, so. Uh, we have the merits of collective defense, and, and um, one would argue that uh, kind of the territorial defense of 1,300 kilometers of Russian border is already, by definition, a collective defense. Uh, it doubles the size or the length of the NATO border uh, currently. Um, but there's, of course, sensitivities. You know, is it escalatory? Uh, although Russia is unlikely to attack militarily strong country like, like Finland, uh, but would it kind of uh, destabilize situation elsewhere? Uh, so perhaps different NATO capitals have different uh, opinions on, 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 on the kind of the timing issue. Although in principle, in the Atlantic Charter, uh, the door is open for, for new members. And then I think Finland fills the criteria uh, very easily and Sweden. I see. <clears throat> you already mentioned um, cyber attacks or possible unlikely cyber attacks against Sweden. The Baltic states have been dealing with these hybrid attacks by Russia for, for decades now. 
Um, what is the situation with these hybrid attacks at the moment? Well, currently we haven't experienced much. There's uh, some satellite signal issues in the eastern part of Finland. Um, those have been frequent over the years. Uh, 2015, 16, we had uh, kind of this uh, small scale version of the, what happened in the, in the Poland Lithuania border last fall. Uh, with the migration, uh, weaponization of migration, we had a uh, uh, few thousand refugees that, uh, that were artificially uh, taken to the Arctic border. Um, uh, but those are manageable issues. And cyber is not an existential threat; it is a manageable issue. And and I I think Ukraine has shown uh, quite well the, uh, how to deal with the, the cyber dimension. Uh, so uh, perhaps we shouldn't overemphasize the Russian capabilities on 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 on, on, on hybrid uh, uh, dimension of things. Finland is a relatively homogeneous society. We don't have a lot of societal cleavages in Finland. Um, um, our Russian-speaking minority is, is around one percent of the population. Um, so. Um, uh, Finland is immune in multiple ways, and I said, as I said, uh, there is a tra tradition, and Russians know it very well that that if you infringe or do something uh, nasty, um, the Finns usually react the opposite way uh, from uh, from what the, what the influencer wants Finland to do. Uh, so, so we have the historical experience of being a neighbor of Russia that has involved quite a lot of difficult times over the past centuries. So, so Finland uh, in its DNA is, is relatively prepared for different eventualities. Um, so so I, uh, I'm not particularly worried uh, uh, when it comes to speci uh, specific uh, Russia Finnish uh, issues uh, that would come about, uh, military issues. I'm more worried about the general situation in Europe and the kind of the escalatory potential over the years, and that's that is the reason why Finland uh, is considering very seriously joining NATO because of the general uh, uh, destability in Europe and the worries about that spreading. So Finland sees joining NATO in long term as a stabilizing um, de-escalatory uh, move. And that's that, that's kind of uh, that is, that is in the government's white paper that was recently given to the parliament that that in long term uh, the Finnish and Swedish membership would stabilize uh, the Baltic and the Arctic uh, and would contribute to the overall stability of Europe uh, and and uh, that's the kind of the key motivation. We are not that much worried about any specific uh, issues that Russia might have with Finland. Uh, uh, we are more worried about the general tendencies in in uh, in Russia that that clearly point out that uh, Russia is becoming less and less predictable and uh, more more of a, of a of a driver of uh, destability in Europe and, and uh, in that type of a situation, uh, uh, a smaller country like Finland uh, needs some shelter. And, and the, it's not difficult position to, uh, for Finland because now it's a it's a choice between kind of a uh, remaining as it is, uh, with, which can be read by Moscow as uh, somehow accepting the demands that uh, Russia made before Christmas when it comes to sphere of influence, or then uh, joining uh, democratic uh, uh, defense alliance. Uh, so, so if you put it that way, uh, the choice is relatively easy. Uh, it, it's not very, very difficult choice. There has been in the Finnish history much more difficult choices uh, uh, that Finland has had to make, like uh, you know choosing between Soviet Union and Germany in, in 1930s. Uh, but this choice now is much more tranquil, uh, and and. Uh, the Finnish uh, popular opinion has shifted so radically that that in a democracy 
it has ramifications and consequences. I see. Thank you so much for your time and for the interesting input. Yes, and thank you. Let's hope that this war ends sooner than later. Yeah, well, let's hope that. But you know, my scenarios are that it's going to last longer than we, we think. It's going to last some kind of a frozen conflict. But the, what I'm worried about is the kind of the internal uh, developments inside Russia, kind of a Stalinistic trap that they are falling into, kind of the fascist fascist uh, element of, of, of the society taking over. So that's that's one one uh, most worrisome scenario that I have, uh, and, and and what type of foreign policy results from that? Uh, and uh, let's not forget that Russia still has nuclear arsenal as well. Which is why um, it will make sense for Finland to join NATO. Yes. Another aspect. <laughs> Another aspect. But uh, okay. thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.